What's going on guys, Bangalina here coming back at you with another video and today we're doing another mock draft and I know many of you right off the bat, where's the face cam? You know what? It doesn't really make sense to have them for these type of videos so here's what you can do. You can, if you're on a desktop, go ahead, go to my Twitter, uh, go ahead, which is linked down in the description by the way, go ahead and click on the image and hold it up next to your screen while you listen or if you're on mobile, you're going to want to get out a pen and paper and uh, draw a picture of me and then you could also hold that next to your screen so you get the full effect uh, if you guys are new here hit the subscribe button please this is going to be my post combine mock draft you guys have all been asking for it and here it finally is starting off at number one I have the Browns taking Saquon Barkley he is the best player in the draft he is certainly the best player available at number one I think he had a tremendous combine uh, and that only further solidified his stock as the best player in this draft. And even though the Browns need a quarterback, I think with their fourth overall selection, and keep in mind, I won't have any trade-ups or trade-downs uh, in this particular mock draft for the sake of continuity, but they can take a quarterback at four, pretty much have their pick of the bunch, depending on who trades up or trades down in, in real life. But uh, yeah, Saquon Barkley for me is a no doubt number one overall option. At number two, I have the Giants taking Quentin Nelson, a guard out of Notre Dame. He's just, I think, the second best player in the draft. And for the Giants have shown, or at least they're talking like uh, they're not going to draft a quarterback, at least in the first round this year. I think you got to take the best player available. Saquon Barkley, unfortunately, is off the board. Your depleted offensive line sure could use the help. Take Quentin Nelson, could potentially even play tackle. I know a lot of people are like, how could you even take a guard so high? I just think he's the second best player in the draft at this point, especially for the, uh, the Giants' weaknesses. So I think Quentin Nelson here makes some sense to the Giants at two. At number three, I have the Indianapolis Colts selecting Bradley Chubb, a defensive end out of NC State. He's pretty much been my pick for every time the Colts uh, are on the board in my mock draft. It just, he's probably the best edge rusher in this class, at least for a traditional 4-3 defensive end. Uh, I think he would fit the Colts' scheme fairly well. Um, either could play him on the edge, could play him slightly more to the inside, depending on what you're doing in that system. Bradley Chubb just makes a ton of sense for that for that defensive line of the Colts. Just take arguably the best player available, especially at your weaknesses, uh, and get that team better. They obviously don't need a quarterback. Moving on to number four, we have the Cleveland Browns once again on the board. We're going to go ahead and give them Sam Darnold, quarterback out of USC. Now, keep in mind, this is not a ranking system. So even though I don't believe Sam Darnold is the best quarterback in this draft class by a wide margin, I think he still will be the pick here. I think the Browns are going to see, all right, maybe he has some potential. Maybe we can work with him. Hugh Jackson is the uh, so-called quarterback guru, even though, uh, I mean, let's just look at some of the quarterbacks that he's had recently. Hasn't really turned Deshaun Kaiser into much. Uh, granted, it's after one year. What can you really expect? I'm not going to cut on Hugh Jackson too badly. Uh, Sam Darnold, though. He's not my favorite quarterback in this class. I don't think he's anywhere close to the best, but he is the pick here at number four for the Browns. At number five, to round out the top five, have the Broncos taking Josh Rosen, quarterback out of UCLA. I think Josh Rosen's definitely better than Sam Darnold, but maybe Sam Darnold has a higher ceiling, uh, even though he has a way lower floor compared to Josh Rosen, who uh, I think is definitely a better day one player. Broncos are going to see that. They're going to be very pleased that he falls to them, and they're going to go ahead and take him at number five. At number six have the New York Jets selecting Josh Allen. And let me tell you something. This guy is tall. He has big hands. Uh, and he can throw far. So if you like a quarterback who uh, has those attributes, Josh Allen could be your man. Bring him into the Big Apple. And he can throw far um, to the Jets receivers, which right now is uh, nobody. Robbie Anderson has more fun telling cops that he's going to uh, fornicate with their wives and then ejaculate into their eyes. That's a direct, that's a quote that's paraphrased. Um, <laughs> apologies for the uh, profanity-ish there. Um, yeah, and Quincy Noon was an impending free agent. They don't really have much going on there. Yeah, Jermaine Curse, okay. Uh, moving on to number seven at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, selecting Derwin James. He's one of the most exciting players in this draft class. Had an insane combine as well. I think his tape speaks for itself. He flies around the field. He's a traditional strong safety, and that's something the Bucks could generate um, a lot of, you know, turnover with, I think. Um, turnovers, potentially. He flies around the field. 
I think he's going to be a really good piece for their defense if they decide to take him, and I think he's worthy of a top 10 pick. At number 8, I have the Chicago Bears selecting Tremaine Edmonds, linebacker out of Virginia Tech. This guy, it's still crazy, and I'm going to bring it up every time. He is only 19 years old. He is going to be drafted as a 19-year-old. He's 6'5", 250 plus, and he ran a 4'5", combine in the 40. Just absolutely ridiculous. Flies around the field as well. Really good traditional, I think, 4'3", outside linebacker. Think about what Anthony Barr does. I think that's a pretty apt comparison to him. Um, and yeah, Bears could use an outside linebacker. They really could. I know they're in a more traditional 3-4. He could move inside in that 3-4, keep Leonard uh, Floyd on the edge, whatever. Tremaine Edmonds, very good traditional uh, outside linebacker. I think he would fit in well with the Chicago Bears. They could really play him at a number of different positions. As we move on to number nine, where I have the 49ers taking Minka Fitzpatrick. I've had him go a little bit higher in some of these past iterations of mock drafts, but I had the Browns taking... A running back in Saquon Barkley and not a quarterback at one which kind of screwed the entire thing and then Minka ends up falling all the way to number nine as the Bears franchise tag or transition tag Kyle Fuller so cornerbacks really not going to be an immediate issue for them so they're going to take the best player in the draft uh, at that spot for their need Bears though we're not on them anymore 49ers obviously could use a defensive back you look at their cornerbacks they don't really have much Akella Witherspoon isn't terrible I don't think Richard Robinson's even terrible but he's uh, I don't even think with the team anymore. I'm pretty sure he got cut. So you do need a cornerback really, really badly. You look at the safeties, and they don't really have much going on there. Uh, at free safety, I know we've talked in the past about uh, Jaquiski Tart. I think he's awesome as a strong safety, even though he has played a little bit of that center field role for the 49ers. I don't really think um, that there are other free safety. Who is it? 49ers. It's Adrian. It's Adrian Colbert. Um, he showed that he was decent near the end of the season. Rashard Robinson's on the Jets, by the way. Um, he showed that he was decent near the end of the season. And I don't think that's really enough to solidify a starting job. However, if you take a guy like Minka Fitzpatrick, you can either play him at free safety, you can play him at nickel cornerback, you can play him as a boundary corner. He's a really talented, versatile defensive back. And I think the 49ers would be very pleased if he were to follow them at number 9. And at number 10, I have the Raiders once again taking Roquan Smith. I think one of the best defensive players in this draft, if not the best, flies around the field. And I keep saying that, but this is an extremely athletic class. And you look at some of these guys going high, and they're supreme athletes. Roquan Smith is definitely one of those. He is sideline to sideline with tremendous speed. Only problem with me for Roquan Smith is he does struggle to shed blocks a little bit. But his coverage ability as a linebacker is some of the best I've ever seen, if not the best of any linebacker I've ever personally scouted, if you will. Uh, his tape is tremendous. His fluidity and coverage is unbelievable. He's such a talented player. Raiders could use help at the linebacker spot. Roquan Smith could fit in very, very nicely. At number 11, I have the Miami Dolphins taking Baker Mayfield, quarterback out of Oklahoma. Uh, they've had some weird quarterback play during the past couple years with, you know, is Ryan Tannehill our guy? Is he not? I think Ryan Tannehill does things uh, just okay. He's very, very well-rounded, but he's not elite in any one category. He's very average, in my opinion. And with his injury concerns, with Smoke and Jay Cutler obviously not being a franchise guy, same thing with Matt Moore, uh, you need a quarterback. And I think the Dolphins could definitely take one in the first round. If Baker Mayfield's on the board, my opinion, best quarterback in this class. You can feel free to disagree, but I won't value your opinion after that. Just saying, uh, Baker Mayfield, very talented quarterback, goes down to Miami. I'd be a little bit concerned considering his potential off-the-field concerns in a place like Miami, but I think his talent, you got to take a shot at him, and the Dolphins could use a quarterback. They go Baker Mayfield at 11. At number 12, I have the Bengals taking Mike McGlinchey. Had a solid showing in the combine. His tape is very good, that Notre Dame offensive line is you know or was arguably the best in the country if not the best and Mike McGlinchey is a solid reason for that great offensive tackle Bengals could really use the offensive line help they need a lot of other stuff a lot of other positions of need but offensive line for me is the biggest glaring hole uh, and after the combat I think Mike McGlinchey solidifies himself as a top 15 pick because there are some needy offensive line teams maybe not I mean we'll see if he doesn't go to the Bengals or uh the Cardinals or the Ravens I mean he's probably not going to be a top 16 pick 
as we're going to move on to number 13 I have the Redskins taking Marcus Davenport an edge rusher out of UTSA very explosive tremendous athlete had a very good combine showing similar to Jadavion Clowney he showed great burst great athleticism was fluid in the drills ran a blazing fast 40 time his tape is very solid other than that I think he solidified himself as probably the second best edge rusher in the class. And for that reason, we're going to go ahead and give uh, the Redskins Marcus Davenport. 14, Packers, Denzel Ward. What happened here? How does arguably the best cornerback in this draft class slip all the way to number 14 with the Packers after having a tremendous combine? He ran 4-3-2. What a 40 time. Vert was very good as well. I think it was 39-5. He was just all around uh, extremely talented. Was a little bit taller than people thought. People thought he was more of just 5'10 flat, but he's actually closer to 5'11. I think he's 5'10 and 3 fourths. And the reason that he fell here is because Minka Fitzpatrick fell. And I think he has more value as an overall defensive back than Denzel Ward has right now as a cornerback. So I think he could fall definitely to the Packers at 14. And why would they not take him if he's available? They need a traditional cornerback. They don't like to draft them. They like to take safeties and play them at cornerback. They need a traditional CB. Denzel Ward is that guy at number 14 as we move on to the Cardinals at 15. Taking Connor Williams, offensive tackle out of the University of Texas. Hook him horns. Connor Williams, solid offensive tackle. I know the Cardinals need a quarterback, but considering their top options are off the board. Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield, all off the board. I'm going to say the Cardinals... Go ahead and pass on Lamar Jackson and help out that offensive line. They get a more solid option at tackle that they haven't really seen since Jared Veldier was in his prime, which he is uh, looking in the rearview mirror of that right now. At number 16, I have the Baltimore Ravens selecting Calvin Ridley, a wide receiver out of Alabama. I think he's probably the best receiver in this class. I think the Ravens would be fortunate if he were to follow them at number 16. I think their wide receiver core is just so depleted. They need some help for Joe Flacco. Not saying Joe Flacco's an elite level quarterback. Obviously, he's not. But he is at least decent. And they do need a receiver. They need some receiver help. I would not be surprised if the Ravens double dipped on receivers uh, in the first and second or first and third or second and third or something like that. They need the help very badly. If they can't recruit um, receivers to come to them through free agency, they're going to have to draft them. Calvin Ridley, I think, would be an excellent option at number 16. At number 17, have the LA Chargers taking Vita Vea, a nose tackle out of Washington. Really the one weak point on their defense, in my opinion, other than linebacker. And I don't think there are any solid linebackers in this range that they really could take. Uh, I think they're just going to take arguably the best player available to fit their needs, and that is to help out their sick defensive line already with Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. Bring in Vita Vea, a true super athletic nose tackle to help out in the run game, really solidify that defensive line as one of the best in the NFL. I think he would definitely do that. At number 18, have the Seattle Seahawks selecting Will Hernandez, a guard out of UTEP. Very, very good player. Had a sick senior bowl. Watched him there. He was tremendous. Came out in the combine. Tremendous combine. Moved around. Was a real athlete for his size. He is gigantic individual. He's a real mauler in the run game. Has good footwork. Really, really tremendous player. I wouldn't be surprised if he keeps accelerating up in draft boards. I had to put him this high. Very, very good player. Not on the same um, level of Quentin Nelson, in my opinion, but he's a he's a more raw player. Um, but he has good technique, good footwork, very solid guard. Seahawks need the offensive line help desperately. Will Hernandez could help them out tremendously. At number 19, we go to the Cowboys, who are selecting Deron Payne. Defensive tackle out of Alabama. Another really solid, athletic, interior defensive lineman. I really love watching Deron Payne. He's probably uh, my number one interior defensive lineman in this class. I have him over Vita Vea, um, which they you know serve different purposes. Vita Vea is more of a nose, as Deron Payne is more of a traditional defensive tackle that can play in a variety of different schemes. Whether it's a, a 3-4 as a nose, I think he would work. I really like him as a 4-3 defensive tackle. Get another big body next to him. Have him as a supreme pass rusher with tremendous athleticism to shed blocks. Really love Deron Payne. Cowboys could use the interior presence on the defensive line. They really could. And um, play him next to the franchise tag to Marcus Lawrence now, as that has happened. Help out that defensive line. Help that defense be uh, a more dominant force. Deron Payne would certainly help in that department. As we move on to number 20, with the Detroit Lions taking Darius Geis, a running back out of 
Louisiana State University. Really love Darius Geis' tape. Um, he was just so, so solid. I, you know, I would liken him to a bowling ball, as when he gets a full head of steam going, he's just going to roll right through you. He's very difficult to bring down, very hard to tackle, and then he went out at the combine, showed tremendous speed for his size. He ran faster than I thought he was going to run. I had Darius guys pegged at like 4.53 or something like that. He came out and ran 4.49, uh, and that doesn't sound like a huge difference, but to me, running in the 4.4s opposed to mid 4.5s, it shows that you do have that breakaway speed, and he already has the power. The Lions really need a running back. It's so badly, so badly. Le'Veon Bell, there's no chance that he goes out in the free agent market uh, if the Steelers franchise tag him again, which I think they already have. So you got to take the best player available here for your needs, and the Lions need a running back. They haven't had a solid running back since Kevin Smith, maybe, for like a year, or Kevin Jones, I should say. Um... And then Barry Sanders. We have to go back that far. <laughs> like, they need a running back. And while Darius Geis isn't a Kevin Jones, he's not a Barry Sanders. He's just a traditional bell cow running back. Solid, solid option. Um, and I'm a huge fan. I would say Darius Geis to the Lions at number 20. At number 21, I have the Bills taking Rashawn Evans, inside linebacker out of Alabama. Really like Rashawn Evans. Uh, I think he's definitely a top linebacker in this class. That's why I have him going here in the first round. The Bills need the inside linebacker presence. They do have Preston Brown. I'm not sure what his free agent status is. I think he will remain with the Bills for at least this next season. Very solid player. He was tied for the league lead in tackles, but they could use another one very, very badly. They have back-to-back -back picks here. And while I do believe that the Bills will trade up for a quarterback, I don't think they're going to take these back-to-back -back picks. I think... Given this current circumstance with the Bills going back-to-back, -back, they have their choice of players. They take Rashawn Evans with the first one. Then go Lamar Jackson, quarterback out of Louisville. Solid player. I think he would fit their scheme well. His talent would come in very, very well. He's like a Tyrod Taylor uh, with more arm talent. And I think, you know, you're going to need an athlete behind that, that weak offensive line, in my opinion. Bring in Lamar Jackson. He's a guy that has a very, very high ceiling. Reminds me a lot of Michael Vick. Uh, I think his inconsistency is a concern of mine. I don't love Lamar Jackson the way some people do. I don't hate Lamar Jackson the way some people do. I think he has a lot of talent, a lot of upside. I just think that he's really got to develop his accuracy, his consistency, um, and I think that his durability could be a potential concern if he takes a lot of hits. But he's such a supreme athlete, such a tremendous uh, player, very fun to watch. I think his arm talent speaks for itself. He just has to work on a few of these kinks, accuracy, consistency, uh, and his decision-making is honestly pretty good. So Lamar Jackson, I have him rated higher than a lot of other people, um, but lower than others as well, obviously. But I think he is a pretty good pick here for the Bills at 22. At 23, have the Rams taking DJ Moore, receiver out of Maryland. Very, very impressive player. I think he would fit the Rams very well. Sammy Watkins is an impending free agent. I think Robert Woods is also an impending free agent, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if he signed a contract extension to stay in Los Angeles with the Rams. Uh, but they could use a receiver. Tavon Austin clearly is not a reliable player. And with Sammy Watkins certainly hitting the open market as they have... Uh, franchise tag LaMarcus Joyner. A wide receiver could be on the table, and DJ Moore, his tape is super solid. He impressed in the combine. Very, very solid player. Definitely a top five receiver in this class. And since this class is so deep at receiver, and it's so close, like, it's not in the past the way we've seen, or it's not in this situation where it's like a Saquon Barkley is the true best running back in this class, and then there's a somewhat significant drop, even with more talented players down to Darius Geis and Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb and guys like that, and Ronald Jones, right? At wide receiver, it's kind of hard to distinguish who the best receiver in this class is. You could say that it's Calvin Ridley. Some could say Cortland Sutton. Some could even say DJ Moore. Some could say DJ Chark. Some could say Equinemius St. Brown. Cortland Sutton, if I didn't mention him. Uh, there are so many that are so talented, so close to each other. I think that you're going to see uh, a lot of variation with the way some of these players are picked to compare uh, where they're seen in most mock drafts. I think DJ Moore is going to rise up draft boards after his pro day, which he's still going to perform in that. Very solid player. Tape speaks for itself. 
Rams take a receiver at this juncture, and it's not one of the ones you've most likely been hearing about. If this is DJ Moore. As we go to the Panthers at number 24, who take Josh Jackson, cornerback out of Iowa. Great ball skills, playmaking cornerback, uh, with really a nose for the football. Super solid cornerback. Was a little bit lackluster at the combine. That's why I think he's going to fall a little bit. But he slips from maybe uh, the middle of the first round where I already had him, you know, around that 15-ish range, uh, although I'd never had him with the Cardinals. I think I had him with the Packers at 14 uh, one time or another, maybe the Dolphins at 11. He does fall a little bit, stays in the first round. Panthers get themselves a playmaking defensive back in Josh Jackson as we move on to 25 with the Titans taking Arden Key. It's no secret that they need an inside linebacker. Avery Williamson is going to hit the open market. Wesley Woodyard's 31. They could use an upgraded guard, maybe even at center. There are some players that would fit really, really well for the Titans here, but I do have them taking an edge rusher. Brian Arakpo's older. Derek Morgan at this point is older. You've seen inconsistency and poor health from guys like Kevin Dodd. You need an edge rusher. Could they go after one in free agency? Sure they could. We're not going to account for free agency. This is just what their team needs are right now. Arden Key goes to the Titans. His talent is supreme it's wild that he's falling all the way down the board if you would have said that to me a year ago i would not have believed you tape was a little bit inconsistent this year productivity was a little bit down but the titans do take in it supremely athletic edge rusher someone that can get pressure on the quarterback and that's what you're looking for as we move on to number 26 with the falcons and i have the falcons taking isaiah win in back-to-back -back mock drafts um solid player went to the university of georgia at played guard he's a guy that can play tackle um, but you're really going to play him at guard if you're the Atlanta Falcons. That is your one supreme need on the offensive line is guard. Really could use the help. Isaiah Wynn, again, he's a very versatile player. Keep him in state, Georgia to Atlanta, uh, you know, like the state, Georgia, the college, whatever. You guys get what I'm saying here. I think it makes too much sense for the, uh, the Falcons to pass up on him. As we go on to 27, I have the Saints taking Hayden Hurst, who sneaks into the first round after a solid, solid combine. Very solid tight end. He's a little bit old. He's a little bit old. I think he's 24 or 25. He was a uh, pro baseball player. So he went into, you know, uh, playing that for a while and then went back to school uh, and, you know, was really solid for the Gamecocks. Playmaking tight end with great athleticism. He can play um, a number of different positions in the NFL in terms of, like, maybe that tight end joker spot as an inline tight end. Um maybe as a wing back it really it really depends i think you could play him at a number of different spots he's a very versatile player um really really like hayden hurst i think he does sneak into the first round he could be a surefire difference maker on the saints offense uh drew Brees, give him another weapon that would be scary flashback to jimmy graham they're different types of players obviously with hayden hurst and jimmy graham if you guys don't know um but i still think that they could wreak havoc together in drew Brees and Hayden Hurst as we go on to 28 with the Steelers selecting Leighton Vander Esch, a linebacker out of Boise State. It's such a shame with Ryan Shazier. I can't not talk about it every time. Such a promising young player. Really, really solid linebacker for the Steelers. Went down with a brutal injury and hopefully he gets back on the field. Hopefully he gets healthy again. And then he makes his decision on what he wants to do after that. Um, but Needless to say, the Steelers do need to address linebacker. Leighton Van Der Esch is an athletic linebacker that can keep up with tight ends, can keep up with running backs out of the backfield, um, can really go out there and make plays, uh, can keep up with an H-back potentially like Hayden Hurst if he lines up at that spot. Um, but Leighton Van Der Esch to the Steelers at 28. As we go to 29, Jacksonville Jaguars selecting Cortland Sutton, wide receiver out of Southern Methodist University, SMU. Very good player. Like him a lot. I think his tape is solid. The Jags are letting Allen Robinson hit the free agent market. Um, I said it in my last mock draft that the Jaguars were not going to franchise tag A-Rob. AR-15. You guys are like, nah, they're going to. And they didn't. I'm not going to rub it in your face. I'm just saying, you know, not everyone said it. Just a few. But um, they need a wide receiver. They need help. They have a number of decent options. Marquise Lee is going to be a free agent. Is D.D. Westbrook a pure number one? No. Is Alan Hearns a pure number one? No. Is, you know, any number of these players, are they number one wide receivers? Uh, no. They need wide receiver. I don't know what I'm doing with that no scheme. It's kind of weird. Uh, Cortland Sutton is a true number one. That's my point. Very, very solid player. Very fun to watch. Great size. Great speed for his height. Um, really like him. I think he'd fit in well. Give Robbie Blake Bortles. 
a little bit of a of a weapon where he can rely on him. It's a, a safety blanket is what I wanted to say there. So Cortland Sutton would work out really well for the Jaguars. As we move on to 30 with the Minnesota Vikings selecting Jair Alexander, a cornerback out of Louisville. Solid playmaking cornerback with great speed. I think he ran 4.38 uh, in the 40-yard dash. I think that definitely makes him a first-round pick if you didn't know already. Plays at a tremendous speed. Very solid player. Vikings could use a cornerback. Pair him with Rhodes closed, Xavier Rhodes. Trey Wayne's is a depending free agent. Terrence Newman's like like 60 at this point. You need more help at the cornerback position. Uh, both those guys could not be on the team next year in Trey Waynes and Terrence Newman. What else do you have at cornerback? Jair Alexander. Moving on to the last two picks of the draft, we have the Pats and the Eagles. I'm going to have the New England Patriots selecting Maurice Hurst, a defensive tackle out of Michigan. He could go much higher in this draft, but due to his size and malfunctioning heart, something's up with his heart that's not good. I think he has an irregular beat or something like that, uh, where it doesn't have to be that serious, and it, there is a corrective surgery that can be done, something along those lines. Um, hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he can play. Really fun player to watch. An extremely extremely disruptive interior defensive lineman for Michigan. He is so fun to watch. Incredible player. Um, great at stopping the run. Great at getting after the quarterback. Exactly what you look for in interior defensive lineman. Uh, one of the best in this class for sure. Patriots snag themselves a gem at 31 as we move on to the Eagles with Carlton Davis. They're a really solid team. You look at the Eagles and you can't really find many holes because there aren't many. They are so solid and they pretty much can take best player available. Quarterback, I would say, is probably their weakest position with Patrick Robinson being older. With Sidney Jones coming back from injury, I think he's going to be an incredible player. Um, but you could use more help. Ronald Darby, solid. But you pretty much just take best player available here. And I think that is Carlton Davis. He'd be a supreme scheme fit for the Eagles. Uh, and why not? Why not get the depth? I know Jalen uh, Jalen Mills is solid. But... You could just take whoever you want. You really could. Uh, and I think in this spot that it wouldn't be uh, the worst option in taking Carlton Davis. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me what you, uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Twitch. All links in the description. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.